Bidding Classics for sponsoring today's video. Check out this online auction for classic cars with no buyer's fees. The Tamer Turbo was a really good car. It used the engine from the Delta Integrale for blistering pace. It had crisp handling and it was comfortable. Very bizarre then to think that Lancia felt the need to make another Tamer, which was heavier, was slower, handled worse, and yet cost two and a half times the price of the normal turbo. Welcome to the Tamer 832. The turbo cost 15,000 pounds. This cost a staggering 37,500. Now, in isolation, it made absolutely no sense, but I have an inkling, I know, what the Italians were thinking at that point. Essentially, the Germans in the mid 80s were really getting into their stride with a formidable array of top end luxury sporting saloons. BMW had the 5 Series, the 7 Series, Merck had the W124, the S Class, and Italy really had no reply. Until that is, some bright spark decided to look for a solution elsewhere in the Fiat catalogue. This is what makes this Lancia so special. It is a Ferrari engine. Now, in truth, this wasn't the first time that Ferrari and Lancia crossed paths. In 1955, Lancia was forced to sell its fledgling Formula One operation, lock, stock and barrel, including the cars, to Ferrari. To add insult to injury, Ferrari then won the championship with that very car a year later. There was, of course, also the fantastic Stratos with the Dino V6 engine. This particular partnership is just on another level crazy. They decided to put a Ferrari sports car engine from a 308 QV into a very ordinary front drive saloon. Now the engine is much changed. They wanted to make it more drivable, talk more accessible. So they went from a flat plane crank to a cross plane crank. The heads are revised and there's lots and lots of other differences. As a result, power went down from 240 to 215, but with higher torque. Not only then did this Tema have a Ferrari engine, but it was a specially modified Ferrari engine only used in this application. Perhaps that explains why it had such an incredible price tag. This car was double the price of a Ford Sierra Cosworth. It was also 7,000 pounds more expensive than an Audi Quattro. But perhaps most damaging of all, the BMW M5, the E28, which quite frankly would run rings around this, was also 2,000 pounds cheaper. Now you may say, well, those are all quite sporty cars. That's not what this was intended to be. Well, okay, let's compare it to a V12, a Jag XJ12, was 8,000 pounds cheaper than the Tamer and really better dynamically in most ways. So the price was a little bit on the ludicrous side, but was it worth it? Well, the answer is yes and no. Wow. Wow, 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 what an engine. It's like a, it's like a cross. It has all the best bits of the American V8, but it has just a rip roaring top end. I'm really surprised because I myself have a 308. So mine is a carb version, but I know how that flat plane version of this engine performs. And honestly, this, it's fabulous, it really is. It doesn't feel like it's really lost much at the top end or anyway in eagerness to wet, to rev. The way it goes up and when you go past about sort of five and a half, it really snarls. The gear change is, I'd read, was quite recalcitrant, quite notchy, quite difficult to use. I'm not finding it difficult at all. It is slightly notchy and you have to be precise when you're putting in the gears. It doesn't forgive you being sloppy, but all in all, it's not getting in the way. And I think it's, it's okay. It's not the best unit out there, but it's all right. The handling though, well, that's another matter. On the way back now, I'm gonna be 
a little bit more vigorous and I can tell you what's up with the way it goes. That engine just feels like a thoroughbred. Oh my God, these are supposed to be the bad points. The handling, so the steering is pretty numb, but quite frankly, I'd re from what I, I'd read, I thought it was gonna be worse. Having driven the original cars, my dad has a, had a succession of tamers. I know what those setups are like, and they're a little bit crisper. This one, there's not much feel coming through. It's not particularly fast either, but it was fairly tidy through those S's. It wasn't absolutely terrible. You can feel the mass of the car moving around though, and ultimately, if you push it too hard in tight corners, then it just defaults to quite heavy understeer, which isn't very satisfying. But if you're driving it on sort of larger sweepers like this, then it starts to make more sense. And I think that as a car designed to travel distance on smooth flowing roads, it would actually be quite satisfying. Now the brakes were quite large by the standards of the time and it's not the kind of car that you're going to be really piling on the brakes for so I'm not sure what they would do in terms of fade. The pedal is a little bit mushy, it's not too bad but um, again unremarkable. I would say that they do the job uh, but they're not exceptional. Suspension really doesn't seem to deal well with the bigger sort of bumps and potholes either. It sends a shudder through the whole structure. Time has definitely been kind to the Tamer steering because the modern setups are so numb that this doesn't feel quite as bad now. But I think that it hardly has any torque steer. And I have a feeling that perhaps the way they set up the geometry and the steering system in order to make sure there wasn't going to be that torque steer is why it's not quite as good or as feelsome as some of the smaller engine Tamers. The Series 2 cars had an active setup this has got passive dampers, but again, they're supposed to work better than the active one. They don't do a great job of controlling body roll. The ride is, I would, to be charitable, I'd say it's unexceptional. It's not bad, it's quite comfortable, but it's not a patch on something like a Jag that you could have bought at the time for less money. Dynamically, it definitely has its failings. On the plus side, well, I've already said that that engine, although maybe not the fastest thing in the world, is spectacular and it really, really is. Nothing goes or sounds quite like it. Sorry if I'm repeating myself again. Also, fantastic opulent interior. I love this. It's the basically, it's the same structure as a standard Tamer, but everything is covered in leather. This whole instrument panel has been changed to give it a Ferrari-esque feel, including the vents, loads more dials, the wood trim. It's got a, a, a strange sort of a matte finish, but I think it suits it pretty well. And it's very comfortable. These chairs are great. They're supportive and they're comfy. The driving position, a little bit long-armed, but not too bad. Perhaps also because of the price, they only sold seven or eight of these in the UK. So it is an extremely exclusive car. And you have to say that Although dynamically it's not the best thing ever, it's still quite an alluring thing. It's hard to emphasize just how exotic this car was for the time. That electric spoiler in itself, I know now it just seems like a meaningless gadget, but for the time, the wow factor was incredible. Apart from that, it's not really very showy. The wheels are a bit different, but it was designed to be a car that would go under the radar. And in Italy, it is said, that a lot of industrialists bought it who didn't want their workers to think that they were making loads of money. So that they basically, they just had a Lancia Tema. So if we judge it by the standards of the time in which it was launched, I think we have no option but to conclude that the Tema 832 was a little bit of a lemon. After all, an M5 would run rings around it and it costs less. But I hear you say, this wasn't really supposed to be a sports car. And you're right. 
And if we look at it as a fastish sort of luxury saloon, then it works a lot better. But there is a problem here too. If you're looking for ultimate luxury and refinement, well, an S-Class at that time, a 420 SEL, which was a much better car, if judging on those standards, was actually cheaper than the 832. Today though, this is a car to be cherished and admired. It no longer matters how it compared to its contemporaries. Its unique nature, the limited numbers, the bespoke build, the Ferrari engine, make it a truly special car. It's interesting to see how much Lancia had changed by the time that the Tamer came out. If you want to see a video on one of the last real Lanchas in the 70s, have a look at this on the Fulvia. It gives you a bit of history of the mark as well. If you want me to do a video on one of your cars, then please contact me on Instagram or by email. Thank you all so much for watching and see you for the next video.